We have urban legends, cold cases, and the supernatural. These are things that interest me, and I know I'm not alone on this. Several subreddits, YouTube communities, and Facebook groups out there on the internet. These are fun to discuss with one another, to share opinions, discuss theories, or offer another point of view on a subject. I've enjoyed podcasts, videos, and documentaries on the unsolvable and the unexplained. I'm Digital Dimwit, and nothing scares me more than the idea of a haunted location in my hometown. Tonight, with the approval of the Midnight Society, this is the story of the La Lomita Mission. In far south Texas, about five miles outside of the city of Mission, at a short distance from the Rio Grande River and the Mexican border, is La Lomita Mission. The mission, formerly maintained by the Oblates of the Mary Immaculate Order of Priests and Nuns, was established to give a place of holy worship and comfort to the area residents. The Oblates, a French order, built the chapel with a brick residence in 1899 and manned it with three priests and a few nuns. Although the site was what today we consider near the city, in those days the distance and unpaved roads proved too far for people to easily travel. Just three years later, the mission was moved to a new complex within the city limits. According to stories handed down through several generations, there was actually a different reason the mission was moved. A more sinister reason. The story explains that within a year after the priests and nuns moved in, Isolation and human nature got the best of the holy residence. Only the nuns and priests will ever know exactly what went on during those long, dark, not so lonely nights. The sudden absence of individual nuns would be explained away by priests who said they were on a religious retreat. The nun would suddenly reappear several months later, but if asked, would always refuse to talk about her absence. Worshippers who made their way to the chapel began to report hearing cries of babies in this place where no baby should be. The prohibited activities couldn't be concealed forever. These people of the cloth, afraid they would be excommunicated if the children were ever discovered, committed the most hideous, unholy act imaginable. They began burying the children's bodies in a field behind the church. One day, a powerful hurricane hit the area, bringing widespread flooding and much devastation. The little chapel was heavily damaged. After the waters receded, people living in the area came to help to repair the structure. Two families coming across the river made a horrible discovery. The bones of a baby sticking up from a washed out shallow grave. Their cries of horror brought others to the field behind the chapel and soon, more little bones were found in the little graves. The priests and nuns made a quick retreat to their living quarters and locked the door to the structure. That very afternoon, when word spread to the ranches and throughout the town, the people were so horrified that they stormed the mission grounds. While the mob was breaking down the doors, one of the priests managed to escape out of a back window. But the other two were captured and beaten to death. The nuns were stripped of their religious clothing and forced to cover themselves with potato sacks. They were placed in the back of a flatbed wagon and taken away. No one seems to know, or at least no one will tell whatever happened to the nuns after that, but neither they nor the priests who escaped were ever heard or seen again. The mission stood empty for a long time afterwards. Some say the bones of the priests remained laying beside the chapel as a reminder of its horrific past. Rumors of baby cries and the screams of the condemned began to be reported. No one dared venture near that site. Eventually, a large three-story brick building was erected to house a Catholic training center for novice priests a few hundred yards away from the chapel. Tales of strange lights and unexplained noises emitting from the area of the old chapel plagued the center throughout its existence. Because of this, it was soon abandoned. On numerous occasions, uninformed visitors and passerbys reported seeing the translucent figure of a nun either standing in the window of the chapel or floating in midair. Perhaps she was one of the disgraced nuns, the only one whose faith and honor remained true an innocent daughter of Christ caught up in the mob's outrage that day. The people who have seen her report her head is bowed as in prayer. Most of the time, she is seen by the moonlight of night. If approached, the figure slowly transforms into a shapeless, misty cloud before vanishing altogether. Finally, the evil vibes of the place become too much to bear, and the buildings are permanently closed. The town of Mission has turned a portion of the grounds into a park, but it's a park no one goes to after dark.